Last week on A Dream Called Mirai, we gave our dwarf chairs a serious haircut. And Smoking John then did some damn fine welding before sending them off to be reupholstered. I also had a hissy fit when a local supplier pitched up half an hour late without so much as an apology. Nine o'clock is nine o'clock. This week I do what anyone does to calm down. I undergo retail therapy and start collecting some pretty natty gadgets for Mirai. We also get stuck into creating the final frame for our windows. All this and so much more in episode 56 of A Dream Called Mirai. a new day it is a new week and yes we're gonna have some challenges this week um, but yeah another busy one uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of work on the inside uh, what smoke and John is gonna be doing is we need to put a bracket all the way around on the left and right hand side of the bus to accommodate our windows the other thing is he's finished the water bracket and that's going to be wrapped with proper raptor because it's going underneath the vehicle all that and a lot more coming up first let's deal with the main water tank bracket which is now complete smoke and john has as usual done a great job here the tank will be well and truly secured beneath the rear of the bus the final stage of the bracket's construction is a coat of Raptor to protect it as it hangs beneath the vehicle, protecting the fresh water tank. Here on the lower KwaZulu-Natal south coast, this coating is critical in making sure that no rust can weaken the bracket holding the tank. Smoke and John has also been hard at work finishing up the framework for our ablutions. Almost everything inside Mirai is designed so that uh, we don't have to bend down too much because I do have a dodgy back and uh, Just on that dodgy back thing. I have started Going to a certain type of exercise which is supposed to strengthen the muscles around your lower back and uh, Yeah, it's called Pilates and it's fascinating to know where the word Pilates comes from So Pilates is made up of two words Pila, great, latte, latte, coffee, great coffee, pilate, great coffee. And we all know just how good a fine serving of latte makes one feel. Hence the name pilate, which also makes you feel great. Hey, I love words, hey? Knowledge is power, bro. Knowledge is power. Now that I've done my educational bit, we can get down to the serious stuff. I love the speed that these oaks work at. I just uh, was away for a couple of hours. I get back and Smoker and John has welded that uh, support structure all the way around on both sides of the vehicle. So now you can get a very good idea of the size of the windows that we are looking at. So that thing is going to be the bracket that those windows will be secured to. Smoke and John has cut lengths of square tubing and welded them into position 100 millimeters above the old window line. We are getting pretty close to inviting the guys from Senna Windows to the south coast to measure Mariah up for that all-important glass. I've always wanted to keep this back window as big as possible, but now that John has put this bracket in on both sides, changed my mind a bit and I think we need it at the back. Plus it's going to give me more space to put my spare wheel bracket here, and I mean these, these wheels are huge, so we need a bit more space. In two shakes of a lamb's tail, Smoke and John has welded the rear window bracket in place. Amazing what one can do with electricity. Something else that happened while I was away is Eskim pushed us to stage four load shedding. So the Oaks and East Coast Scratch and Dent are like climbing in on all of their projects because uh, it's ridiculous. You know, you've probably got about four hours of power where you can run your tools and everything. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how any small business does it. To cope with the depression of load shedding, one does the sensible thing. You shop. Well, you fire the generator up at home and then you shop. 
those of you who have been following our journey uh, will know that I've been doing a fair amount of online shopping with varying degrees of success and some have been like a mission hey? but uh, the latest little thing to arrive is this baby um, and it is a tire pressure monitoring system a time eight tire pressure monitoring system one of the reasons I went for this system is, is that you can monitor up to six tires tire pressure. This unit uses solar energy and also USB to charge. Um, and it's connected via Bluetooth to the little caps that you put over each valve. Um, the only mission I see is each time you've got to pump air in, you've got to take that thing off, be careful with it, you know. So uh, that is something that I am going to have to consider. The homework I did pointed to this system being a hot favorite in the US of A amongst RV owners. However, I also learned that there are hundreds of surveys on the same topic, all with different results. We will only know how good the system is once it is installed. And even more shopping. Uh, Brahm has drawn me a map, which I will show you shortly. It's a work of art. Uh, and I'm on my way to Port Shepston to a business that sells uh, radios, vehicle radios. Um, I'm looking for a system that can is touchscreen and can take a front and a reverse camera. So, uh, here's the map. Uh, you come off the highway, you pass that dot, then that dot, and there you go, there and there, there and there, and it's here. Brahm, you are better than making mirage than you are making maps, bro. By some miracle, I did find the place though. Okay, well that was quite successful. And so here we have got a Sony Multimedia Center. I have got six Pioneer, six and a half inch uh, speakers. And we've got two car cameras. One for the rear and one for the front. Yeah, the toy box is getting full. The rolling blackouts are also impacting on how quickly Smoke and John is able to complete his daily sessions on Mirai, which obviously means things are moving a little slower than usual. With the power off, the guys decide that it's time to put Mirai's shoes back on. And boy, do these make her look all grown up or what? This is the first time I am seeing Mirai on her wheels um, since we put the roof on. And this is a big girl, hey? She's not going to fit in my garage at all. Mirai is huge. She is now 3 meters tall and around 7.5 meters long. So the reason the guys have put the tires back on is it's time for us to start looking at our access and how we're going to get into this vehicle. In other words, stairs. Uh, we need a stair for the, the main door, for the back, but we also need to get into uh, the driver's compartment. Smoke and John was busy working on an ingenious staircase design that Brahm came up with. When we spotted a wee problem. A wee problem that we did consider a few weeks ago. Okay, Houston, we do have a little problem and that problem is our rear clearance. I have a decision to make and it concerns my cooker because the cooker is over the wheel arch. So either the cooker must go inside because we need to raise that wheel arch. We removed it long ago to give us a flat surface inside. We need to go up by about 80 millimeters. Um, so the guys are busy just seeing how it can be done, if I can still keep the cooker on the outside. But if I have to choose between clearance and the cooker, clearance will win because it's critical. However, never fear when Brahm is near. It took Brahm a few minutes to suss out the options and to find a solution. The cooker can stay. Smoke and John has a lot to do before the next power cuts kick in. So the plan is John is going to build something that's going to come up like that, straight, and then down there. So we'll just have a little bit more, that, that, that extra 80 millimeter, which will uh, make a huge difference. I left the workshop for a few hours, and when I returned, Smoke and John had already made the wheel arch 80 millimeters higher. The opposite wheel arch was a bit easier to do as we have not built our gas bottle compartment yet. With this crisis avoided, it was time to address another issue that has been frustrating me as much as the ongoing roadworks in our area. The roller door, my main vehicle entrance. After a lot of thought, a lot of thought, um, and consulting with Brahm, 
deciding to scrap the roller door thing. Um, also based on information um, that I received off social media, I put a question out there to guys who have these overland vehicles, if anybody had that system. And they all came back with the same thing and the biggest concern is dust. And the guys who make these things can't guarantee it'll be dust proof. And uh, anybody who has traveled, <laughs> gone up north into the drier areas of the country knows that fine powder dust that gets into the most waterproof of luxury vehicles you can find. So, roller door, pew, deleted. Alrighty, that's it for this week. A uh, little bit of a scare with that uh, whole Kieran story, but Smoke and John has sorted it out. Um, there will not be an insert next week, uh, taking a little break. So we will go out again in two weeks time. And hopefully by then uh, we've got a bit more information on the motor and the parts that we are still waiting to come down from Kauteng, the turbo, manifold, and a few more bits and pieces. But uh, yeah, lots going on. And uh, until then, keep safe. Remember to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We are also on Twitter. You will find us under a dream called Mirai. Until next time, keep your dreams alive.